So the Benchmade proper is what we're looking at today. I got this on a crazy good sale. Uh, we got the Sheep's Hoof Red G10 version that we're gonna be looking at today and uh, making it into this slip joint arena. You know, uh, slip joints are knives that don't have any sort of locking mechanism. Think like a Swiss Army knife, that type of thing. So it's basically legal almost worldwide. And Benchmade has just jumped into this. And I've seen just a lot of people digging this. So I wanted to purchase one. I went out and bought one so I could give you guys a thorough and honest review on my thoughts on this design, particularly for those of you around the world that maybe have stricter knife laws than we do here in the States. What we're going to discover in this video is that there are some great aspects to this knife and there are some big drawbacks to this knife. So I want to be able to share both the pros and cons with you as we dive into this design and this first slip joint that Benchmade has ever made. So let's go ahead, break this thing down, hop over to the tabletop and see what this has to offer and whether or not it's going to be the right tool for you. And you can overlook some of the hangups that I have with it. All right, we're going to start with deployment. It being, again, that basically worldwide legal from what I can, you know, ascertain from almost any country in the world obviously obey all your uh knife laws but uh being two-handed deployment nice deep nail nick right there easy to grab and deploy the knife that slip joint feature again like a swiss army knife meaning there's no locking mechanisms just friction and it's pretty decent you know i mean i can push some pressure on it and it'll pop but it'll kind of pop itself back into place and it's kind of a two-stage joint so you have it open there's definitely that seat right there and then it locks back into place. No, really good detent. It's not going to accidentally fall out or anything like that. This would normally be your lock back lock bar, but because there's no locking mechanism, you just see it kind of flex there ever so slightly to let the blade come out. And then it deploys. No nail nick on the left. It's kind of weird, you know, that I don't see companies doing that and giving it on both sides, but um, that's that's the way it is. So easy to open up one-handed and you can't really do it or excuse me two-handed you can't really do it one-handed and then easy to close one-handed so that is the deployment and the locking mechanism if you will or the retention you know the the friction uh, against the the slip joint is good and it does have good centering as well straight down the middle there so zero complaints for what this is being that slip joint you know almost worldwide legal type of knife so the blade s30v cpm s30v steel great steel really high quality you know it's one of the higher quality steels i've ever seen on this style of friction folder type of knife so that's really awesome to see nice and thin blade as well coming in at 0.09 so less than an eighth of an inch thick back here and then basically keeping that consistency almost all the way to the tip which is really nice. And then you are looking at 2.86, so under three inches on the blade. And we are looking at a flat or saber grind, which is really nice. Great relief edge, was super impressed with the cutting capability of this. And then has a super aggressive, sheep, super aggressive sheep's hoof design with a really massive swedge all the way along here, basically. So cool styling for a sheep's hoof. I will say though that um, they do offer now a clip point version. I would absolutely go with the clip point version over the sheep's hoof. It is a super aggressive sheep's hoof. So, I mean, it, it doesn't look ag uh, aggressive and it's not super aggressive. It's, it's really kind of difficult to puncture maybe some packaging compared to a clip point design, um, you know, and really no belly at all. You're gonna get very minute belly movement, very light sweep. And that's about it. So, I mean, this is a great little, you know, EDC tool, slicer, everything that you're seeing as we're running in the footage here was super impressed with the grind angles, the thin blade, the saber grind, all of that. But the, with the clip point version now available, I would absolutely go with that over the sheep. So if you're just going to get, I think, more utility overall compared to this super rounded off uh, design that doesn't look scary, but also isn't, in my mind, as functional as a clip point will be, particularly at the tip with precision penetrating and puncturing of like packages and that type of thing but when it comes to actual you know grind angles geometry and edge retention with the satin finished blade i mean they're, they're they did great i mean it, there, there's no issues there and uh, if the end of this video after we talk about our next point here uh, if this design overall like the idea of the knife fits with you go with the clip point and i think you'll be um, happier than with the sheep's sheep's hoof design in my opinion so here is the dilemma and really going to be the deciding factor for you is the handle. I believe the blade, high quality, good grind angles, all of that. 
Uh, the handle though, I'm definitely having some issues. Now there's two different options right now in the market. Uh, from everything I see, this is just like blowing up. So, I mean, I may be the only voice that's dissenting voice when it comes to this part of it. Um, and there may be other options down the line, but this is red G10. Uh, there is green micarta. I got this because it was on sale uh, at, a, at a really good price point. Um, and that's why I picked this one up. It was just kind of on a whim. I was gonna review this design eventually. I was really looking forward to this design until I, I handled the ergonomics. And uh, this is really where it comes down to some issues. Now, uh, really machined well and super slick. So this is not a grippy G10 at all. Really contoured well. I like that a lot. This is gonna come in at 0 0.4 inches thick. It's gonna be 3.83 inches long overall. Lanyard hole right there. Obviously no clip to consider. You're gonna easily throw that though on you know, a keychain, a key ring, a lanyard and throw it in you know, the coin pocket of your jeans, um, you know, whatever it may be that you would wanna use that. Nice, generous, you could easily get 550 paracord through there, no problem. And uh, very, very cool you know, in that sense. No, no real issues, no flow through construction because of that resistance bar, that friction bar that's hanging out right there. There. And they did machine out the steel liners in here. So this is, would be a very rugged, de durable knife. And uh, hopefully you guys can see that in there. Making this 2.32 ounces, ultra lightweight, coming in at under two and a half ounces. Very impressed with that weight class as well. Making this, again, very easy to throw in a pocket, very easy to EDC, throw in a keychain even if you're looking for that style of knife. Good star, good torques here as well, so you could take this apart, clean it, do different things like that. Now the issue comes in to the fact that I wear large size gloves. If you've been watching the channel, you guys know it. Big, large size hands. And this knife is too small. And this is really where design has sacrificed capability. And this could have been awesome. And I would be, I'd be raving about this knife for those of you overseas, um, particularly if it wasn't for this aspect. Now, when I hold the knife up here, feels nice. We got some little squared off jimping there. Just give me a little grab there, nothing tactical or aggressive or anything like that. We got a little bit of a cut in here, just slightly, just to give me that little extra sense of security if I am bearing down on this knife and, you know, really going to town and doing some work. I know I'm not just gonna go, oh, and, you know, hurt myself because of the slickness of the G10. So that that's all great, feels good. The problem is that they have cut this in instead of going on a more natural route, now it looks really cool and it like flows, the design flows, but the ergonomics don't flow. And my pinky is right on that hump. And every time I'm either having to like try and jam all my fingers inside this back kind of cut in right here, and then my fingers want to go over this hump and now I don't feel controlled, or I kind of have to just rest it there and my fingers want to kind of go over, and but now it's too wide and, and I'm constantly fighting with the ergonomics. And if I just bite the bullet and grab it right there. I can just feel it the whole time and just doesn't feel natural. It's not super painful or anything like that. You know, with bearing down and cutting, you're not gonna be like, oh my gosh, my hands are aching, but it's just, you notice it and you know it's there and it, you wish it wasn't. And, uh, that, and that, that's the crux of it. I mean, if they had just gone with a more natural, you know, sweeping motion, like what we have here on a way cheaper, but similar size and weight class um, K-bar, you know, dozer, this is just a natural sweep and my finger can rest right there, no hump to worry about, and I just feel you know comfortable and in control. Uh, again, we're gonna look here at the Buck 112 with custom 5160 steel. Links below for that guy if you're interested. Um, but you can see here again, the cutout is natural like this, making it you know go into my hand, Nothing, no humps to worry about, meets my hand really nicely there. Even this little tiny Gerber that we recently you know did a video on, it's got the cut in, and then I, it, my, Pinky, it's, it's so small, my pinky's not even on the knife, but it doesn't create any hot spots, and I have better control and just feels better in the hand than this Benchmade does because of the cut backwards towards the handle, making this kind of abrupt angle. Just, it, it, it's not good. Not good, and it doesn't work for me. I want it to work for me. I think everything else about the knife is super cool. Um, I think that the red or the green, I think the grind angles, the steel, the clip point, all of that, are, are 
awesome in you know all of that. So uh, I would say if maybe you have small, if you're a male and you have small, maybe medium sized hands, you could get away with it and get your hand in there, and you know it would be natural. But if you have large, extra large size hands, I think you're going to be regretting it. Um, and, and this is just going to constantly be in the back of your mind, bothering you and not giving you the grip that you want. And it's just kind of giving a little bit of a sharp pain on your pinky. So that is my one big beef and complaint. And I know at the price point of, um, $115, we will have links in the description below over to Amazon, as well as blade HQ. We get kicks backs from both of those links that we offer you below. So after this video, if you're like, yep, dude, I doesn't matter. I've already handled one. It's not a problem. Or if you, uh, do have smaller hands and you just want to give this thing a shot, both using either the Amazon links or the blade HQ links helps me get out there, buy knives, just like this one, purchase this guy and give you guys honest reviews and honest feedback. And that's a great, simple, free way, if you will, to support the channel with those blade HQ and Amazon hyperlinks. And as we wrap this video up and I just want to hit final thoughts on the price point value. Um, now, I don't know of too many, again, S30V slip joint blades, you know, with this type of quality USA made. Um, so that is a positive, but for $115, I mean, I can get the bug out bench made, which is going to be larger. It's S30V steel. I mean, we have the access locking mechanism, ultra lightweight pocket clip, lots more features. And that's the point I'm getting at is that the features on this would require a lot more time, energy, and money invested in the company versus this one, which is basically just a blade, no locking mechanisms, steel liners, and the, the handle scales. So for the price, I think it's a little bit steep deep for what you're getting. If this had come in more around like 80 or $90, I think that would have been a lot more beneficial. You know, get, got it under a hundred dollars for sure would have helped people not only decide whether or not they want to purchase it, but to me would have made more sense. Cause there's a lot more, um, you know, uh, effort as well as just features that have to go into making something like this than this. And these are both coming in at the same price point. So that's a little hard for me to swallow as well. The price that they're asking on this knife. So there you have it folks. I hope this video has helped you out decide whether or not the proper is the right knife for you. And if you're able to look over some of the um, handle ergonomic issues I have and purchase it anyway, or after this video, you're going like, wow, yeah, that's just not the knife for me. That's what we always want to do here at the channel is help you guys make the best decision possible when you're throwing down your hard earned money. So thank you so much for coming over here today and checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. Any questions you have, I'll answer in the comments below. Check us out on all the relevant social media. That's a great way to see what's up and coming. And finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.